Hello and a very warm welcome to the Netherwent ministry area and to our online worship for this first Sunday in Lent. This week we begin our journey. We go through this season of Lent. It'll take us to Holy Week and then to the celebrations of Easter itself. And this time of Lent is very much a time of preparation, a time for us to prepare ourselves internally, to prepare our spirits to celebrate the great festival of the Christian faith. So you are very welcome. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord for he will have mercy upon them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain, and heals our wounds. So let's pray together. Almighty God, you fed your people in the wilderness and guided them by clouds and fire, giving commandments to order their lives. Give us eyes to see your purposes, perseverance to follow where you lead, and courage to know the truth that sets us free, that our lives may be blessed and that your will may be done. Amen. So in a moment of stillness, as we recall God's presence with us, we also pray that he'll bring to mind those things for which we need to seek forgiveness. Our Lord Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Of these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted. Let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we've fallen from temptation into sin. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who are heartfelt, heartfelt repent and in faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Through Christ, let us offer our sacrifice of praise to God. Let our lips proclaim his praise. Sunbeams 
scorching all the day, chilly dewdrops mightly shed, crowding peace about your way, stones your pillow, earth your First reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verses 1 to 11. When you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land the Lord your God is giving you and put them in a basket. Then go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and say to the priest in office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you should declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, subjecting us to harsh labour. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. Then you and the Levites and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and to your household. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 4 and verses 1 to 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. 
If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we have two readings for uh, the first Sunday of Lent. We have our Old Testament reading from Deuteronomy and our New Testament reading from Luke. Uh, now, for those of you that haven't met me, I've made a, I'm making an attempt to always at least give some explanation of the Old Testament passage, because I found that um, we're not, we don't really do much with the Old Testament normally. We go right to the gospel or right to Paul's letters. In De Deuteronomy here, we have this instruction from Moses to the people that says, when you've come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you should take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the Lord, and you should put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. In Deuteronomy, of course, the setting is Moses' last speech before the children enter the promised land. And the, for the writer of Deuteronomy, this, you, this appears all the time. The place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. For readers much later, they understand this to be the temple. And we have this uh, in Jesus's, uh, in the Gospel of Jesus, that he's presented at the temple. So you're supposed to present the first fruit of your, of your harvest, but you're also present the firstborn. Um, and we, uh, during Candlemas, we celebrate this. We celebrate the presentation of, of Jesus at the temple, and also the cleansing of his, the purification of his mother, Mary, who must wait so many days after childbirth and then present an offering to God to be pure. So this is a tradition that existed all the way to Jesus' day. But I think the, the key things I just want to point out here is the reference for why should you do this? And you should do this because God has uh, taken, he started out a wandering Aramaean, was my ancestor. And in Deuteronomy, he's referring to um, Abraham. And for scholars, they find this very interesting because this is the first time Abraham is viewed as being Aramaean. Normally, we say he came from Ur of the Chaldees. But, you know, there are different, these are oral traditions, and there's difference of opinion on it. But there's uh, Abraham, then he went to Egypt, and of course, he didn't go to Egypt, but Jacob and the rest of his children went into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and then became a great nation, mighty and populous. And then he talks about how they're treated harshly, they came out of slavery, and then they were brought into the promised land. And so the idea here is that uh, because God has prepared this land for them, this promised land, ones that they didn't work for and ones that they didn't deserve, they should each year give him the first fruits. But the nice thing about it is, um, you're supposed to then have a celebration. That's the key thing here. And that's another link to the New Testament because Jesus' favorite image of the kingdom of God is a big banquet that we're all invited to. And you see here, then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and your house. And just a couple thoughts there. Why the Levites and the aliens? Well, the reason is because the Levites don't have any land. And the aliens, of course, they don't own any land either. So when you have the, your harvest and you celebrate, don't forget the people that don't have anything to celebrate. You bring them and you all celebrate together. Now, what's this got to do with the temptation of Jesus? Nothing at all, but I'm just being true to the lectionary and just giving you some insights into this passage because it is the backdrop for the story of Jesus. Jesus was born a Jew. He grew up in this tradition. And we have here in Luke's Gospel, he's just been baptized by John. The Holy Spirit has come down with power. And the first thing the Holy Spirit does is leads him into the wilderness to be tempted. I think this is an important thing for all of us as Christians. Um, the Holy Spirit moves us always to become more into the likeness of Christ. As I always say, we're all made in his image, but the 
our lifelong goal is to grow into his likeness. And Jesus here has just been declared God's beloved. So what's that going to look like? What's that going to look like? And that's where he's tempted um, by, we say, the devil. Uh, I just want to say a few things uh, here about the devil. We have quite a developed um, theology of the devil, due mainly to Dante's Inferno. But in Jesus' day, there was a lot of confusion about the, the, what the devil was. Uh, another word for it is a slanderer or the accuser. And we have in the book of Job this view of the devil actually being God's employment. He is meant to give a contrarian view to everything God does. To, so God gets to hear the other side of the coin. The point here being that Jesus is, has his own questions about what it means for him to follow and be God's anointed one. So he says, if you are the son of God, command the stone to become a loaf of bread. The background for this, he's already fasted for 40 days and nights. So the image is like on Mount Sinai, where Moses goes up for 40 days and 40 nights. It's a real uh, common uh, number in the Bible that means kind of a long time. So Jesus is starving. He's very hungry. And then he says, look, you have the ability to turn these stones into bread. Why don't you do that? And Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Now, the important thing here, I think, is for Jesus to recognize that the power he has by the indwelling spirit is not there for him to use on himself. Remember when he's on the cross, they say, well, you know, come down from the cross or let Eli to save you. And we know that Jesus could have, if he wanted to, called on the angels to come save him. But he decides always to be completely human, to not use any of his power by the Holy Spirit to help himself out. So that was the first thing. You know, it's a bit like if you rubbed a, a lamp, I know this doesn't really happen in real life, and a genie pops out and says, you get three wishes. It is a bit like that. And for first thing you do, of course, is, is get, you know, a big house, lots of money or whatever. And Jesus kind of has that, you know, he's, he created the universe, right? But he says, no, man does not live by bread alone. Then the devil takes him up and shows him in an instant, so this is a vision, all the kingdoms of the world. And basically says, I, I can, I've been given these kingdoms, and I can give them to anyone I please. If then you worship me, it will be yours. And this is another subtle, uh, a subtle um, temptation. In fact, I will say this. I, I would think that at the time Jesus is having these images, I'm not sure he's thinking the devil's tempting me. He's actually wrestling with his inner voices as to what he should be doing. And I think it's only afterwards when he thinks about it and reflects on it that he re realizes the, de uh, the devil. I mean, why do I say that? Because if the devil, and I knew it was the devil, came and told me to eat a cheeseburger, I would be very suspect, right? I would think that's probably not a good idea to do if the devil's asking me to do it. But no, Jesus is given this option to have a kingdom that looks like the worldly kingdoms. The great Roman Empire, before that, the great Greek Empire, before that, the great Persian Empire, before that, the great Babylonian Empire, and the Egyptian Empire, where the pharaohs and the kings lived in splendor and glory. And don't forget to this day, we, the West, look back on the Romans and the Greeks as being, their empires as being things of marvelous beauty. We go and we like to look at the ruins and see what amazing things they did. Was this the type of kingdom that Jesus was going to have? But Jesus recognized in doing so, he would be inadvertently um, going against everything God stands for. Because God, as we find out from the Gospels, God is with the weak. God is with the leper. God is with the lonely. God is with the poor. And this is the, mystery, uh, the, the center of God's kingdom. So Jesus says, it's written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And finally, the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple. Once again, this will be a vision of God because we've already been told he's in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He says, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down from here. And he even quotes scripture from a psalm. He says, he will command his angels concerning you and protect you, and they won't let your foot dash against a stone. And Jesus answers, don't put your... Lord your God, to the test. And we will find this later in the gospel. The Pharisee will say, give us a sign, give us a sign. 
And uh, Jesus, um, in a cryptic way, says, well, I'll give you the sign of Jonah. I'll give you the sign of Jonah, just like he was in the fish for three days. Uh, then so the Son of Man will be put to death and rise again. So he gives them some cryptic things. But if you notice, he doesn't give signs. Now, the gospel, this is a tricky one. He doesn't give signs that they're looking for. But we find some of our gospel writers view all Jesus' miracles as signs. Signs to show who he is, that he is indeed God become man. And it's interesting, after he's had these temptations, should he use his power for himself? Should he set up a kingdom like we all love our kingdoms to be? In fact, like they, his followers wanted him to be. They wanted him to set up the kingdom of Israel up against Rome, to be a proud nation. Does it sound familiar? To be a patriotic nation uh, that the world would respect. Or should he show great powers and wonders so all the religious leaders would, be, would, would now see him as their leader? And instead what he does is he spends his whole life subverting, subverting the kingdoms of this world and his whole uh, life with the religious leaders, telling them they're looking in the wrong place and showing them that God has different concerns than they do. So in our Lenten time, as we meditate, as we pray, let's remember that we too will have our inner voices and we too like Christ need to discern discern what is from God and what is from the our our dark voice our slanderer our accuser amen Just as I am
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord for the courage to give ourselves to him this Lent, praying, Lord, meet us in the silence, give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to look beyond ourselves, to mission in your world. We pray for our Bishop Cherry in this Diocese of Monmouth, for Jeremy, Dan, Hilary, Jilly, and all who lead us in the Netherwent ministry area. And we pray for our witness and the witness of our churches. May the blood and water flowing from the side of Jesus bring forgiveness to your people and help us to face the cost of proclaiming salvation. Lord, meet us in the silence, give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up war, bitterness and hatred and to seek peace. We pray for Ukraine and the conflict unfolding there, for a quick, just and peaceful resolution. We pray for those fleeing that conflict and all others fleeing conflicts around the world. May the shoulders of the risen Jesus, once scourged by soldiers, bear the burden of political and military conflict in our world. Lord, meet us in the silence, give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to meet the needs of others in our families, communities and around the world. As we choose to give things up, we pray for all who have no choice yet still go without. For all choosing between food and heat, for all who have no home, for all for whom life is hard this day. May the presence of the risen Jesus, his body once broken and now made whole, bring comfort and direction as we learn to serve one another. Lord, meet us in the silence, give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to live for others, giving time, care and comfort to the sick and all who suffer. We pray for all suffering as a result of the pandemic, for those unjustly imprisoned, for victims of torture, for all those known to us who are suffering, bring them to mind before God in the silence. May the wounded hands of Jesus bring his healing and the light of his presence fill their lives. Lord, meet us in the silence, give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up our fear of death and to rejoice with those who have died in the faith. We pray for all who mourn, that they would know your peace, Lord, which is beyond all understanding. May the risen Lord Jesus, whose feet were once nailed to the cross, walk alongside the dying and bereaved and lead them and all your church through death to the gate of glory. Lord, meet us in the silence, give us strength, and hear our prayer. So gathering all our prayers together, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray our collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, be it without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us in our worship today. And as always, if there's anything you'd like us to pray for you, um, please do send us a message. Or if you'd like to chat to one of our clergy team, please do get in contact and um, we'll arrange that. You will find the notices for the coming weeks on the cards at the end of the service. We do have a number of study groups and activities happening during Lent to which you're very welcome to join us if you're able, or if not, we can provide some material for you to join with us um, at home. We're also, of course, all deeply concerned about the deteriorating situation in the Ukraine. And please do keep the peoples of U the Ukraine, Russia, and all of the neighboring countries in your prayers. There are a number of local initiatives where people are collecting goods or asking for donations to be sent to the Ukraine. That's quite a, a changing situation and we are updating details on our website as, and, and on our social media as they become available. But please do support it. I know it's very much appreciated. So let's bow our heads for the sending out. Cast your burdens upon the Lord, for he will sustain you. Create in us clean hearts, O God, Renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from us. Give us the joy of your saving help. Sustain us with your life-giving spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day, the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Just die for me. Long my 
sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke, the dungeon flamed with light. Why chains the love my heart was free? I rose and fall and follow thee. Saved by faith and created in Christ for good works, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.